Hi everyone, welcome to the visual guide for Euphrosyne. This is the brand new Alliance Raid made available by Patch 6.3 and Final Fantasy XIV, God's Revel, Lands Tremble. This raid might leave you feeling breathless or in a haze, your head spinning with fever or even feeling loony. This is just a phase that will pass and I'll help spare you the doom of it all as long as you promise to try your breast. My name is Mistech and I'll be your raid guide. The raid leads us directly into a face-off with Nofika. Abundance will deal high raid-wide damage throughout the encounter. Healers shield and heal as necessary. Matrons Plenty will form a ring of brambles around the outer edge of the arena and flowers covering the rest of the arena. Anytime the boss casts the giving land, players will need to pay close attention to her animation. If she has the ring of flower petals around her, all players will need to move out of melee range to avoid the incoming point-blank circle attack. If she has a ring of brambles encircling her instead, all players will need to move close to the boss's hitbox to avoid the incoming room wide donut attack. Matron's Harvest will deal massive raid-wide damage throughout the encounter. Healers be ready. Reaper's Gale will have two sets of crisscrossing lines appear over the arena. Players will first need to dodge the first set, and once it explodes, move into that safe area to dodge the second set. During the next Matron's Plenty cast, the boss will cast Floral Haze, affecting all players with a forced march debuff in a random direction. At the end of its duration, this debuff will take control of your character and force them to move in that specific direction. This will occur while other boss mechanics are happening and players will need to pre-position themselves to end up in safe spots as their debuff timers expire. The boss will cast two rounds of the giving land and players will be forced march during the second one. As such, players can manually dodge the first attack as necessary and then pre-position their characters to end up in the next safe spot after their debuff expires. The distance of the forced march isn't very far so make sure you pre-position appropriately. Matron's Breath will spawn blue and yellow numbered towers on the north side of the arena that will explode after a short time time in the order indicated. At the same time, two flower circles will form. These blue and yellow flower circles will make players standing in them resistant to blue or yellow blossom aether respectively. Players will need to look at the color of the exploding tower and stand in the same colored flower circle to avoid high damage and debuffs. The towers will explode in their numbered order from northwest to northeast, but the colors of each tower might change, so be sure to adjust into the proper flower circle as necessary. Players will then experience another matron's plenty and Floral Haze cast. This forced march timer is much longer than the first one, so be sure to keep an eye on it as it gets close to expiring. Landwalker will cause a number of large circle attacks to target the platform. The boss will also cast Reaper's Gale at the same time, and all players will need to dodge both sets of the attack while also avoiding the circles on the ground. Watch for another giving land variation and dodge in or out as necessary. Sewing Circle will form two sets of circle AoEs around the boss that will travel to the outside of the arena from the center. Players will need to dodge the first set and then dodge into those lanes to avoid the second set of traveling circle attacks. The boss will cast another giving land variation and all players march debuffs will also be expiring at this time. Make sure to pre-position your character in the appropriate direction to have your forced march dodge these final mechanics. Throughout the encounter, the boss will cast furrow and a random player will be targeted with the stack up marker. Group up to share the incoming damage. Heaven's Earth will target all three tanks for tank busters. Move away, cool down, and heal as necessary. At this point, mechanics will be begin to repeat until the boss is down. In the next section, players will need to deal with multiple sets of trash that throw out a ton of AoE attacks. Watch your feet as you burn everything down. Some of these adds can also target tanks with tank busters, so be ready with those cooldowns. Once the smaller packs are down, a behemoth will drop down. The primary tank will be targeted with a shared tank buster that the other tanks can stack for. Ecliptic Comet will deal proximity-based damage from behemoths, so make sure you move as far away as possible to avoid death. Lastly, Behemoth will turn to a random player and cast Trounce, a massive frontal cone. The second boss has this fighting both Althic and Nemea at the same time. Tanks will need to pull each boss apart as they will tether and buff each other if they're too close. Each boss also has a hard and rage debuff timer and they must be destroyed before this time or you will die. Nemea will cast Spinner's Wheel throughout the encounter. This will mark all players with an orange Arcane Fever card or a blue Fever Reversed card. Arcane Fever will afflict all players with Pyretic for two seconds at the end of its duration. Players must stop all actions while Pyretic is active, or they will take massive damage and probably die. Fever Reversed will freeze any players not actively moving at the end of its duration. Mithril Great Axe will target a random player with a massive frontal cleave from Althic. Move away to avoid getting hit. Althic will periodically cast Time and Tide during mechanics, indicated by this massive pink clock targeting your character. At the end of the cast, any debuff or mechanic timer will be massively accelerated and players will have to be ready to adjust for it in advance. The UI countdown will let you know how much time 
before the mechanic actually goes off. Axioma will deal high raid-wide damage and cause a number of dark lines to spawn across the platform that will apply heavy and magic vulnerability up debuffs on anyone standing in them. Hydrotosis will target all players with targeted circle AoE attacks and players will have to spread in the available safe zones to avoid overlap. Inexorable Pull will cause all players to be thrown into the air, dealing high damage and debuffs. To avoid this, players will need to stand in the dark zones and get heavied on purpose. Hydro Rhythmos will spawn a platform-wide line attack that will then split in two and move outward in the directions of its telegraphed arrows. Players will need to dodge the initial attack and then move into it to avoid the remaining attacks as it continues to travel to the edge of the platform. Petra will target Althic's primary Tark with a stack tank buster. Stack up and cool down through this damage as necessary. Eventually, Nemea will teleport to the south of the platform and cast Hydrostasis. Three numbered towers will spawn at the north, southwest, and southeast points of the platform. Each tower will cast a radial knockback in numerical order, and players will have to position themselves against each tower in the direction of the next numbered tower to avoid getting knocked off the platform. You can use your knockback immunity in an emergency, but be aware that it will not last for all three knockbacks. For the final tower knockback, you can position yourself towards the center of the arena. These mechanics will repeat throughout the encounter. During the next set of hydrostasis towers, Althic will target one of them for time acceleration, indicated by the pink time tether. This tower, regardless of its initial number, will cast its knockback once time accelerates, and players will need to position near it as if it was the first knockback. At this point, all mechanics will repeat with some overlap, and players will have to watch for their own debuff timers, ground AoEs, and all thick time manipulation as necessary. The encounter is over once both bosses are down. The next section of the instance will have more trash mobs that need to be destroyed while dodging the glut of AoE attacks they throw at you. The third boss is Best Girl Haloni. Reign of Spears will deal multiple raid-wide AoE hits, cooldown and shield as necessary. Throughout the encounter, the boss will jump to the center and begin to cast Tetrapagos. Four AoE attack telegraphs will appear in a random sequence during the cast. At the end of the cast, the boss will then cycle through all four indicated attacks without telegraphs. Players will have to memorize the order of mechanics during the cast, and then adjust as necessary once the attacks start to dodge each one in turn. While the order is random, the possible types of attacks will be a donut attack, where players will need to dodge in, a point-blank circle, where players will need to dodge out, and half room cleaves on either side of the boss, where players will need to dodge to the opposite side. Doom Spear will form three stack towers around the room, one for each alliance, which can be assigned in advance. Stack with your party to share the incoming damage. Spears 3 will target all three tanks for heavy hitting tank busters. Move away, cool down, and heal through these. Thousandfold Thrust will have these orange circles spawn around the boss that will then collapse into the direction the attack will go off in. Players will need to move opposite these markers to avoid getting hit. Locos will target two quadrants around the arena edge and spawn a group of spears in each one. These spears will attack in wide lines directly in front of them, forming only one safe quadrant. Move into the safe quadrant to avoid getting hit. Will of the Fury will form a ring on the outer edge of the platform that will move to the center before disappearing. Getting hit by this attack will freeze you in place for a short time. At the same time, the boss will cast Wrath of Haloni, dealing proximity-based damage from the center of the room. All players will need to run to the outer edge to reduce damage. As soon as the outer ice ring explodes, run into that area to avoid the rest of the attack as it moves towards the center. Eventually, the boss will become invulnerable and three glacial spears will appear on the platform. After a short time, the area around each spear will be confined by impassable walls, and each alliance will need to move close to their assigned spear as soon as possible. During this time, players will also need to spread for and dodge attacks from the spears. Additionally, a fourth glacial spear will appear in the center of the arena that will throw out a rotating line attack that will pass through each alliance's section. Players will have to identify which direction this will spin in and get behind it to avoid getting hit. Once a spear is destroyed, the walls will disappear, allowing access to the middle spear. All spears must be destroyed before the boss's gauge reaches 100 or you will die. Halone will cast her ultimate and healers will need to cool down, shield, and heal through the multiple hits of incoming damage. At this point, the mechanics will begin to repeat with some overlap. Take each one in turn and you'll be fine. When the boss casts Chalaza, one player will be targeted by a stack up marker, while others are afflicted with circle AoE attacks that must be spread. Any unaffected players will collapse onto the stack up player to share the incoming damage, while everyone else spreads to avoid overlap. All of these mechanics will repeat until the boss is down. This leads us straight into the final boss, Menfina. Blue Moon will deal high raid wide damage. Healers be ready. This first cast will also rim the outer edge of the arena with a death zone that should be avoided throughout the encounter. The first Love's Light cast will form a massive moon on the outside north edge of the arena. The boss 
glass will then cast full bright, and the moon itself will begin to cast, indicated by this moon phase animation. When the moon reaches full, a massive line attack will cut through the center of the platform directly in front of the moon. All players will need to move to the size of the arena before this time to avoid getting hit. Throughout the encounter, the boss will jump to the center, face a random direction, and cast Midnight Frost, a half room cleave directly behind her. Players will have to move opposite the icy indicator before the cast goes off. Lunar Kiss will target all three tanks with line tank busters. Each tank will need to move away from others to avoid overlap. All other players must ensure they never stand in line with a tank during this attack. Silver Mirror will target the ground under random players with multiple circle attacks. Move away as necessary. Moonset will spawn three large circle telegraphs on the platform that the boss will jump to in the order that they spawn in. Avoid these areas as necessary. After the final jump, the boss will cast Winter Halo, a room-wide donut attack. All players must be ready to run close to the boss to avoid getting hit. The next Love's Light cast will form four moons around the arena. The boss will then cast Full Bright, and all four moons will begin their cast, beginning on whichever phase they spawned in. To handle this, players will need to identify and stand in the new moon circles as their attacks will take longer to cast. As soon as the first set of moon attacks go off, players can then adjust into the safe zones to avoid the final set of moon attacks. Eventually, the boss will cast Selenian Mysteria and become invulnerable while three pillars and a number of sprites appear around the platform. Players will have to destroy each pillar before her gauge reaches 100 or you will die. During this time, all players will have to deal with cleave attacks from the sprites and AoE circle attacks that must be spread to avoid overlap. Once all pillars are destroyed, the boss will summon a good boy and deal massive raid-wide damage. Healers be ready with cooldowns and heals. From here on out, players will have to watch for attacks from both the boss and the dog. For Midnight Frost, players will need to move opposite the usual icy indicator while also paying attention to which side of the dog is lit up, as this side will also be targeted by an additional half-room cleave. Find and stand on the safe side of the boss to avoid both hits. Playful Orbit will have the dog separating from Menfina and they will each cast another set of cleave attacks. Again, move opposite the Midnight Frost indicator on the boss while also moving opposite the lit side of the dog. Keen Moonbeam will target random players with circle markers that must be spread apart to avoid overlap. Cratering Chill will form two proximity-based damage markers on the arena. Move away from both to reduce incoming damage. This attack will cover the arena in slippery ice, and players will lose control over their characters and slide a short distance in whichever direction they move in. During this time, the boss will cast Playful Orbit and Winter Halo. Players will first need to identify the safe side of the dog and slide in that direction, while also ensuring they're near enough to the boss to avoid the donut attack as well. Once these attacks go off, the ice will disappear and players will be free to move around again. Moonset Rays will target one player for stack up. Stand together to share the incoming damage. All of these mechanics will repeat until the boss is down. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Up next, we'll head into the new Extreme Trial. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.